Welcome to the G5 Hive and our next installment of our Worker Bee series where we deep dive into the G5 college football landscape with the folks that know the teams the best. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're listening in podcast form, please rate and review. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Utah State Aggies, who finished 6-7 and seven in 2023 and capped off their season with an appearance in the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. They wrapped up their 2024 spring practice with the spring game on April 20th. We have a special guest joining us today. He is the owner, publisher, editor, and recruiting specialist for the only website for Utah State Aggie football and hoops recruiting, the Big Blue USU Aggie News. He is happily married to Amber and a father of six. He is Brian Phillips. Brian can be found at Brian Phillips A1 on X. Welcome to the show, Brian. Justice, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Really excited for the opportunity. <laughs> So, uh, so recently, Blake Anderson was relieved of his duties as head coach. Nate Dryling was named the interim head coach. Um, he was new to the Aggies this season as the defensive coordinator and the defensive end coach. What will this mean for Utah State here in 2024? Uh, off the top of my head, it will it is brings a tad of uncertainty. Uh, it will be Nate Dryling's first head coaching gig. Uh, he is at 33 years old, the youngest FBS football coach in the country. So it, it's going to be learning on the fly. He's going to have to trust his assistant coaches and, and everybody's just going to have to pull together and, and kind of lift each other up and, and get through, get through camp and get on to Robert Morris and into the season. So uh, with Anderson News, um, I think it opened up a window for the uh, you know the players themselves to kind of enter the portal, a 30-day window. Um, but so far, we've only seen uh, wide receiver Micah Davis kind of take that opportunity. Are there any other players we should be concerned about at this point, or you, you think like th- th- that's probably it? So, so there was a second player, another wide receiver, uh, Zachary Black. He was a redshirt freshman. He was actually the first to jump. Um, okay. I don't believe he's landed anywhere yet. A uh, Southern California kid that had a chance to make some noise in a year or two. But Mike Davis definitely um, surprised for one. Um, big blow for another. I mean, to lose a starter just – a week before training camp starts or just days before training camp starts, you know, he was, he was on several all conference watch lists. So that's tough to lose. Um, With about, Oh, I'm guessing eight or nine days left before that 30 day window closes. I don't anticipate anybody else leaving. If it were to be, if that were to occur, I would say it could possibly be somebody that, finds themselves already far enough down the depth chart that they're unhappy with their role and is going to try and make a jump. But, you know, to try and find a role someplace else in mid-August is really tough. So that's why I don't really anticipate anybody taking off at this point in time. Yeah, it would seem like if someone jumped at this point, um, unless unless they were, you know, one of the top players that, that they – they have, and even then, like I can't imagine many schools have spots open, right? Have have right. availability. So you, the, the risk of you basically sitting out a year, I would think it would be pretty high at this point. Right. The, the, the only way I could see anything potentially happening is if it was somebody that had enough eligibility on the front end that maybe they could jump to like a JUCO or something like that. Sure. So for those not familiar with Utah State's offensive style, how would you describe it? And will the loss of Blake Anderson have any impacts on that offensive style? So I would describe the offense as very much wide open. You're talking three wide receivers. You can spread the tight end out uh, to make it a four, four wide receiver set or a four receiver set, one back, classic one back uh, formation. They'll spread the wide receivers out to the to the sideline, sideline to sideline, as wide as they can go, and, and try and just open up the entire field. Um, they'll move the tight. They can move the tight end in or off the line of scrimmage, out into the slot, like I just mentioned. But very much uh, 
three, three to four out and, and running back style of offense. Very spread out. Do you think and, they'll be? Go ahead. Sorry, Justice. No, I was just going to say, do you think there's going to be any impacts with Anderson gone? Do you think there might be some? some I, I would twist? definitely say losing Blake, Coach Anderson, excuse me, would be a big deal. Uh, one, he was the primary pay, play caller and and quarterbacks, uh, quarterbacks coach as well. So just losing uh, a coach with his level of experience, calling plays, being involved with the offense, that, that that's a huge loss. Just the fact that now you've gone from – you you've lost – your most experienced coach on the staff. Do you, do you think like from a personnel standpoint, we're going to see a lot of changes or you think it's going to be, it's going to be pretty similar to what we saw with, with under uh, coach Anderson. I don't anticipate any personnel changes whatsoever. Uh, wide receiver coach Kyle Cephalo was uh, coach Anderson's right-hand man. He's been elevated to offensive coordinator, well, co-offensive coordinator, I should say, as well, but he's going to be the play caller and it, he's, he's not going to change a thing. It, it's just going to be business as usual and, and roll what they had, had been working on into the spring, right into the fall and in, into the season. Well, one thing we know for sure, and as whoever plays quarterback this season for the Aggies will be new to the team this off season. They saw Levi Williams graduate and move on to starting his Navy SEAL dream uh, Cooper Lagarde transfers to, I believe, Tulsa. Uh, McKay Hillstead off to BYU. Uh, they both transferred, I guess, kind of either near the end or after spring practice. And then they bring in Spencer Petros from Iowa, Bryson Barnes from Utah, uh, Jake McConover from BYU. And then um, after spring, they secured a commitment from uh, Boise State quarterback C.J. Tiller. Um, Post-spring, it was announced that Petros was announced as a starter. How has he looked in fall camp? And do you think he has a pretty, pretty uh, heavy stronghold on the job? Or so Spencer Petrus will definitely be the starting quarterback, barring barring any kind of injury suffered in fall camp. He will be the starting quarterback when we roll out August thirty first against Robert Morris. Um, he he's got a big, strong arm. Uh, he's got a nice touch on the deep ball, and and that's a that's a staple of the Aggie offense, you know, uh, we, we like to go deep and, and kind of spread that defense as thin as we possibly can. Um, he's got good pocket sense and is able to maneuver the pocket, maneuver in the pocket and keep his eyes downfield and is able to make his check downs and reads and not just focus on one or two guys in the pattern. He's not a super mobile guy, but he's mobile enough that if he's forced to leave the pocket, he's going to make a defense pay for uh, their over pursuit. So Spencer Petrus has been pretty impressive. He was a lot better when I first saw him in spring ball. I, he was much better than I thought he would be, especially being out all of the 2023 season with an injury. So he, he came in ready to go and pick the offense up really quickly. So that, tells me that he's also a, a, an intelligent, a smart quarterback. So, and, and extremely seasoned. I mean, he spent five years at Iowa. So he, he, he's, he, he played in, he started in 31 of 37 games at Iowa. And so he's, he's played against top flight talent in the big 10. So not a lot that you're going to throw at him is going to face him at this point in time in his career. Has he talked about the the stark contrast from going from Iowa to, to Utah State, where in Iowa, I feel like the quarterback's job is to not lose the game, right? You don't have to go win the game for me, but you better not lose it. Whereas right. at Utah State, I would characterize as probably, hey, your job is to go win this game for me. Yeah. Um, has he has he talked about that that kind of change or um so I think he hit on that briefly at Media Day for, for the conference a couple of weeks ago, but for sure. Uh Iowa typically wants a game manager, right? And here, I, and I think that's probably what appealed to, to him most when, when he was first approached about uh, coming to Utah State is that he's going to get a chance to kind of come out and sling the ball, and he's going to be able to sling the ball a lot. And we, we 
scored over 30 points per game last year and relied heavily on the pass. And I think that is something that will appeal to quarterbacks. And it, it definitely appealed to Spencer Petrus. And he jumped right in in January and has made the most of it. And, and in the wake of Coach Anderson's uh, dismissal, Spencer has been a very calming influence in the locker room. Uh, not only with the offensive guys, but the defensive guys as well. He's been letting guys know, hey, man, you need to stick around here. Don't jump shit because we're going to do something special. Well, how has the uh, the rest of that quarterback room looked so far this fall? I know I, for one, am, was super excited uh, about the commitment from C.J. Tiller because I thought he was a really you know nice-looking, promising quarterback there at Boise State. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm really excited about his future in particular there for the Aggies. So, yeah, we, we just held our first uh, fall camp scrimmage yesterday. So Bryson Barnes, the transfer from Utah, took the second team snaps. Uh, C.J. Tiller took the third team snaps. And then Jacob Conover, who actually spent last year at Arizona State, um, he, he took the fourth team snaps. So it, it each guy has their strengths and weaknesses. Uh Barnes has shown a big jump to me from spring to fall, and, and that's good. That means that he spent a lot of a lot of time in the summer wor working out some kinks and picking up the offensive scheme and stuff like that. Tiller is a very mobile dude. He's a mobile guy. He can get out and kind of run a little bit, more of your classic dual threat type dude. And Jacob Conover, coming out of high school, that guy was a high four-star recruit. <laughs> Uh, offered from Alabama and, and several several SEC schools and, and Pac-12 schools. And so he he's very much a classic drop back kind of guy too. And so everybody's got a contrast to their game a little bit. But right now, Spencer Petrus clearly stands out as the number one guy. Well, moving over to the running game, they lost their leading running back from a season ago in Devon Booth, who transferred to Mississippi State. But they did return Rasul Faison and Robert Briggs from a year ago. Uh, they combined for over 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. They also bring in Juco All-American Nick Floyd. How has that running back room been shaping up so far? The running back room is come, coming along. Again, starting over with a bunch of new faces, but we have the two uh, holdovers from last season, uh, Robert Briggs, uh, 11 games, three starts, 80 carries, 420 yards, two scores. Uh, senior, uh, Rasul Faison, 13 games, three starts, 180 carries, 736 yards, five scores. So that's going to be a solid one-two punch. Um, it was described to me that Robert Briggs actually had the better spring ball out of Briggs, Faison, and departed uh, Devon Booth. So I would expect Briggs to really see an increase in, in productivity this year. I think he's going to make a big jump and, and it's going to be pretty impressive because that kid, that kid can fly and, you know, Rasul's not, not a slouch either, but he's definitely a bigger back. He, he goes about 200 pounds. And if he gets into the secondary and a safety or corner tries to get in his way, he's going to make you pay. Well, last season, it was kind of a three-headed monster between uh, Booth, Faison, and Briggs. Do you envision it to be a three-headed monster again? And if so, who that third person is? Or do you think it's mostly going to be uh, a Briggs and Faison? I would expect primarily Briggs and Faison this year. Um, I think in a perfect world, we brought in a pretty highly touted high school kid named Herschel Turner. Uh, the kid – had an amazing senior season. He ran for 3,000 and something yards his senior season. Uh, like you said, Juco All-American Nick Floyd. I think in a perfect world, you'd try and play each guy four games if you found a way to, to fit them all in. And, and we brought another junior college kid in that's a sophomore um, from Iowa Central, Derek Jamison. So if you could fit each guy in, sporadically and still save a redshirt year for each guy. That would be, I think the dream scenario uh, as far as the program is concerned. 
whether that works out that way or not is a whole other whole other situation. Absolutely. Um, so who do you think is the first carry for a running back versus Robert Morris? Based off what went on yesterday, I'll say I'll say Robert Briggs. But but it's really it's one A and one B. So I mean Briggs and Briggs and Russell Fison are definitely your your two primary backs. Do you think uh Fison being being the bigger guy is gonna be the guy that got the, the short yards or goal line guy, if you will? Uh no, not necessarily, because they're both low to the ground strong runners. Um and, and Rasul can definitely break it. He 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 can take it the distance from anywhere. So Briggs Briggs is a smaller but more mobile running back. He catched the ball out of the backfield a little bit better and stuff like that. He did a lot of that in high school as well. So that they they are going to complement each other really well. You could see one guy one snap and one guy the next, and either guy are capable of taking it the distance from anywhere on the field. All right, uh, let's get back to that passing game um, and look at the re- wide receivers. So Ter- Terrell Vaughn graduates, uh, leaving 2023 standout Jalen Royals as the man for the Aggies here in 2024. The aforementioned uh, Micah Davis, who was third leading receiver a year ago, recently transferred to Ole Miss. Uh, they returned just about everyone else. They also bring in uh, Jack Estera from Charlotte and a Juco All-American Robert Freeman. Um, how has that wide receiver room looked, and how are they kind of shaping up behind Jalen Royals? Um, not bad. They're, they're starting to take shape. The, the, the two deep, at least, is starting to, to round out. Um, it, it's going to be a collection of pretty much the same guys that were here last year. So I don't think there'll be a ton of surprises as far as that goes. Uh, Jalen Royals is on everyone's uh, all-conference lists. He's made several um, all- preseason All-American lists, uh, frequently being mentioned as being a potential second, third team All-American candidate. He's on a Blitnikoff uh, watch list. So Jalen Royals is definitely the man uh, as far as what's what's being looked at right now. Do, do you think he's in for like a, a really, really big season or you think they might try to you know, spread it around some as well, or? The way the offense is built, uh, the quarterback is going to take what's given. Uh, Jalen's definitely going to get his, but, you know, it, it will definitely be spread around, M- much like you saw last year between uh, Terrell Vaughn and Mike Davis and obviously Jalen. So uh, Jalen kind of snuck up on everybody last year. Uh, he played here as a sophomore as well. I think he only caught one pass as a sophomore and then jumps out last year and just explodes and, and broke the school record um, for touchdown receiving touchdowns in a season with 16. I mean, it just, just completely blew everybody away, but he, he'll definitely be a focus uh, of opposing defenses, but the way coach Steflo is going to spread things out, things are still going to open up for him. So it seems like a lot of folks, and maybe not necessarily Utah State folks, but just college football folks in general, were really excited about the addition of Robert Freeman. And I think I think the excitement really comes from looking at his size and trying to say, oh, he's the he's the next Terrell Vaughn or he's the the next De- next Devin Tompkins because he kind of fits the mold of those kind of guys. But right. how how has he looked uh, in the spring and, and so far here in fall camp? He's still a work in progress. Uh, he does compare very favorable, favorably to Terrell Vaughn, and that's actually why he's wearing number zero. Is Terrell wore zero, so uh, so he wanted he Robert wanted zero as well. Um, right now he stands about third on the depth chart, but you know it's it's still early in fall camp, and, and things can happen, and, and you can still make a move, and and definitely work your way up into a higher snap count. Is uh, is there anyone kind of standing out to kind of take that next step like Royals did last season or kind of still to be determined? It would, I think it's kind of still to, to be determined that other wide receiver spot is still kind of wide open. Uh, Micah Davis was slated to play the, the 
wide receiver spot opposite uh, Jalen Royals. It's it's open right now. Otto Tia, a junior, it's that's been in the program for four years, is up there, and Colby Bowman, a returner from last year, is still battling for that spot as well. Uh, Bowman was a highly recruited uh, player that originally went to Stanford and, and joined us last year and, and had a decent season as our what maybe our fourth receiver or so. So. Those, those two are definitely battling out for that opposite receiver. Uh, Grant Page is a is a sophomore. He came in last year as a transfer from the University of Colorado. He's lined up behind Jalen Royals, and he had a great spring. I mean, Grant Page had a, an outstanding spring, in my opinion. And so I, I think he'll he'll make some noise with some t- with some time that he gets this year as well. So if if you had to make a prediction, if it was up to you, maybe the best way to say it, if it's up to you. Who do you think are the the three guys they're rolling out there week one versus Robert Morris for the receivers? Jalen Royals, absolutely. At this point in time, I wouldn't be shocked to see Colby Bowman end up taking snap one. And then in the slot, Kyrese White. I think Kyrese White will will definitely be the slot guy. And Kyrese, I think, you know, was someone that looked good in the spring too, right? Wasn't absolutely with, you know, Michael yeah. wasn't now there. So had an abs- yeah. absolutely outstanding spring ball. Awesome. All right, uh, moving over to the tight ends. If you were to describe how the tight ends are utilized in this offense to someone who has never seen a Utah State game, how would you describe it? Based off the past, I would say not very well. Uh, definitely overlooked. There's a tight end on the field most of the time and extremely underutilized this season i don't think that's going to be the case i I think you'll see the tight end uh be a big part of the offense and the reason i think that is because with spencer petrus coming from iowa they are taught that the tight end is your best friend i mean iowa is famous for churning out nfl talent and spencer has come in and really taking a liking to the tight end room and, and set, continues to tell them and, and boost that group's confidence by saying, hey, man, keep an eye on me because I'm looking for you. You know, that may not have been the way it was in the past. It's not going to be that way this year. And so I, I think the tight ends are really going to take a big jump as far as production goes. You know, we, we've had we've got a graduate junior, Brock Lane who's made several uh, preseason preseason all-conference lists. He started 10 of 11 games last year, caught 21 passes for 208 yards and a score. But he's a dude that has kind of been snake bit a little bit through his career with some injuries. But if he'll stay healthy like he did last year, he's got he, he's a real strong blocker, but a great route runner, a uh, real threat up the seams and in the middle of the field and can contribute some yards after the catch as well. And I think you'll see him take a big jump this year with Spencer Petrus as his quarterback. That's an excellent point. I hadn't really kind of put that together, you know, in regards to to, to Spencer and, you know, the Iowa and and how tight ends are utilized there. But yeah, that, I mean, that makes a lot of sense that, that, you know, that would, that would necessitate or, or kind of help the, the, the tight end production there for the Aggies. Big difference. Big difference. So on paper, the offensive line looks to be in pretty good shape heading into 2024. I would say maybe if there's an issue, maybe it's probably the depth. Um, but they do return five players who started a lot of games from a year ago. Uh, they do lose Ralph Frias the third uh, to transfer and Wade Meacham, Calvin Knapp, and Jackson Owens to graduation. Um, I only saw one addition via the portal. So I got to assume that the staff feels pretty good about the offensive line. Uh, how, how have they looked in the spring and the start of fall camp? Uh, it's been pretty strong. It's been a pretty, it's been a pretty positive carryover. And so that that's kind of been, that, that's been rare at Utah State for a while. We've kind of had offensive linemen jump ship, especially with the addition of the, or the introduction, I should say, of the transfer portal. It's been kind of tough to, 
hang on to some dudes, but we've got a good group and we've got some guys that saw a lot of time and we're returning a group that's got some, some starting experience under their belt. And so I feel pretty good about the offensive line. And I think, I think the coaching staff does as well. Uh, these guys really, really love uh, Cooper Bassett, the, the offensive coordinator. Well, he's the co-offense. He's been elevated to co-offensive coordinator as well. Excuse me. But the offensive line coach, these guys will do anything for, for that guy and, and speak very highly of him. So they're, they're a really experienced, well-coached group at this point in time. All right. If you had to pick an offensive player to have a breakout type season here in 2024, who are you going to pick, Brian? I'm going to go with Kyrese White. Oh, he he had a great spring. He's had a solid summer, good week of first camp. Um, last season, or he's been at Utah State for two years. He transferred transferred in from the University of Utah. So far over his career, he's only caught three passes for eight yards. I think he'll surpass that week one. So Kyrie's White is going to be the starter at the slot, and he will definitely be the, the breakout player of this offense. Well, Brian, I just want to thank you again for taking some time out of your day to spend with us and share your knowledge. We greatly appreciate it. I appreciate you guys reaching out and having me on the show. I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Thank you so much. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're listening in podcast form, please rate and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Thank you all for your support. And until the next time, we are the G5 Hive.